talk about women's successes and their journeys and how they achieve their successes. But I know I've talked to a lot of you this week, and everybody has a zillion questions to ask Katie, so we have a long list. Good. Um, but first, let's start with the wine. Okay, why don't we first tell about the wine, and it's called Kind, kind of Wild Wine. Yes, so we're drinking Kind of Wild Wines tonight. Um, this is a, a wine label that I launched back in June with Mike Joe Counters, uh, two brothers, Jordan and Adam Sager. Um, been in the wine business like their whole lives, basically. And I've always been a wine drinker, but I found as I got older and after having a baby that even having just one glass the next day, I had a hangover. Mm -hmm. It was like I feel like that cloudy, foggy feeling. And I'm sure a lot of you are moms and know that the cloudy, foggy feeling happens <laughs> even without the wine. <laughs> so, so it was like I, I wanted my glass of wine at night, but I was like kind of terrified that of how I would feel the next day. Mm -hmm. I was like, am I going to feel even worse after having this? So I started looking more into organic wines and I thought well gosh for the last two decades I've been so into organic eating why haven't I thought about organic drinking I don't buy conventional grapes because they're dirty dozen but I'm drinking conventional mm -hmm. wines how's that any different and the more I looked into it the more I learned that wine can have like 70 additives in a glass of wine that you're having and it's one of the only consumables on the market that you don't have to have an ingredient label or nutrition facts. So if you think about it, when you turn the bottle over, you're not seeing any ingredients of what you're drinking. There could be food coloring in your wine. There could be all kinds of things. And then I also learned that ve I, I would thought vegan wine. Well, of course, wine is vegan. Well, no, it can go through dairy, it can go through, it can go through fish guts, it can go through egg whites, all different things. So, um, you know, if you have an allergy to any of that, that's also going in there. Um, so I just started learning more and more about it, and that a lot of times it's those additives and preservatives, that that's what's causing the hangover. Not so much the alcohol, but just one glass, like, gosh, that's not very much. Two glasses, still not very much. So when I made the switch, I thought, I'm feeling a lot differently. This is kind of amazing. And I met my partners, and we wanted to do this together. And Kind of Wild is something that I've become so passionate about. Because I feel like the more you talk to people, the more you say, hey, do you know what's in that glass of wine you're drinking? They go, I don't want to drink that either. Right. And so I think it's going to be like organic food. The more that you learned about eating organically, the more that you just wanted to, totally. to buy the organic option. Right. right now, that's what's going to be the same thing with drinking. Yeah, and I know a lot of us in the room are very concerned about all those things. Yeah, um, and I was on your website, and I love learning about the mission of the, the brand too. Right, so we're uh, trying to be very environmentally friendly. We're one percent for the planet members, and we're a globally sourced wine. So we work with different small vineyards all over the world. So our Sauvignon Blanc is from South Africa. Our Gruner, which we're drinking tonight, is from Austria. Um, and what we do is we ship it in pouches to California, bottle it there so that we're not making such a large carbon footprint of bar bottling in another country and shipping. That way it, it's um, much more, it's much easier. And um, we bottle it there. We're using lighter weight bottles so that they don't cause as much um, waste. And if you notice, we don't have foil on the top of the bottle. Our labels are... are <laughs> <in>. bumble with <laughs> that. Yeah. <laughs> we do a linen hemp label with vegetable dyes. So we're trying to think of every little bit and, and cover what we can um, to, to give back because I, I think of wine as like a comfort food um, and I love <laughs> comfort food and I've always said to be comforted by my food, I need to know where it came from, how it was raised, how it got to my plate and what it's going to do for the future. Mm -hmm. So that's what I want with this wine. And so we called it kind of wild because we were like, it's kind of wild that we're doing this. And also rewilding the planet. Love the idea. Yeah. I love that. Um, in terms of going from cook on the kitchen mm -hmm. to starting a wine line, that's quite a jump. How did you make that? Like, how did you know what to do? Well, you know, I, I think of food and wine as hand in hand. It's like 
like the hip bone connected to the knee bone type thing and now I'm eating and I want a, a good glass of wine to go with what I'm eating. Um, and I've been so interested in the wine business for a really, really long time. And I had looked at other partnerships and thought like, you know, I, I don't want a one night stand with somebody. I want a ring. You know, I want my, I want my <laughs> So I wanted to do my own thing. And this just felt so right. And once I met my partners, I knew that this was the, the business. And I, I think that in any kind of business, that's what it's about. And collaboration and finding those people that you want to work with that share your passion, share your vision. And, and Can you tell us a little bit about your journey and how you went from West Virginia to a star? In this I grew up in this little tiny town. It was only like 2,000 people. Wow. And... Um, I had very strong females in my life. Um, my mom and dad split up when I was only two years old, so it was me and my mom. Um, I mean, my dad was in my life, but it was you know primarily me and my mom. We lived in the same neighborhood as my grandparents, my great grandmother, my great aunt and uncle. We were a very close family, even though I was the only child and I was this only little kid. I had all these great adults around me, but my mom was a very hard worker, school teacher. Um, I would say if it hadn't been for my grandma, I don't know what she would have done because um, my grandma was so supportive. But my grandmother, she went to college when she was in her 50s. My grandpa got married when she was 16. And so she didn't have the opportunity to go get an education until she was older. And so I was a little girl watching my grandma when she was like 58 go to college. Yeah, that's so and cool. she would take me to nursery school and drop me off and go to her classes then and pick me up after. And then she went out and got her own job after that. And actually that was how my grandma introduced my mom to my stepdad because she worked in his office. That was her job out of college. And I uh, had the most wonderful stepdad. But um, it's his birthday today, actually. But um, my so I got to watch these women who worked so hard, and not that they're doing anything in what I do, but just having the confidence to go do that. Like I can't imagine being fifty eight and saying I'm going to go to college and be with a bunch right. of young people and feel that kind of confidence. So it's just that feeling of you can do whatever you want to do. And that's how my mom always was. She would say, if you want to be an astronaut, you can be an astronaut. It was like, there. I felt like the sky was the limit. Mm -hmm. I never felt like there was a cap on what I could do um, because of her. That's so amazing. it was all like my mom and my grandma. Yeah. So you went to college. So I went to college. I was a journalism major. I wanted to be a writer. I was always into food. I worked in restaurants all through college. And um, I, it was around that time that like Food Network was starting. It was starting to get that little bit of traction. Like I loved watching Emerald and Rachel Ray, <laughs> and I would read Bon Appetit and Gourmet and Food and Wine. I thought, I wish I could be a food writer someday. And Sex and the City was popular. I was like, maybe I'll be a carrier. <laughs> 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 so I dreamed of New York. And I went to New York for a weekend thinking that I went to look at culinary school. Um, you know, I had this look where I met a rock star and then moved to New York. <laughs> 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 she did New York. That's how I wound up in New York. Um, but then, you know, from there, I'm, I started working in a fish market, actually, when I, I first moved here. Um, I worked in a fish market in the Hamptons, um, and I started writing for Hamptons Magazine. Like, I still wanted to follow my path of, even though my life had taken such a wild turn, I was still following my path of what I wanted to be, which was a food writer. Mm -hmm. And then I started getting, like, these little things on TV, um, and it turned into this career. And did you have one moment to be like, I made it, or was it just gradual growth that's the whole way? You know what's funny is I still don't feel that way. Like I, I still don't feel like oh, I made it. Like I'll have moments where I'm like, oh, this feels really good. I like it, you know, I, I wanted to accomplish this, I accomplished it, and that feels great. But it, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. That like I feel like okay, well now what's next? I did this yeah. now. Okay, what what's going to be next? And sometimes I wish that I could just. Um, 
like settle in success and be like, and I guess settle is not the right word, but to find like peace in it and just think like, oh, this moment feels really good. I, I wanted to accomplish this and this feels really nice. Instead, I think like, okay, this was good, but I'm working on this right now and I want that to happen. And yeah. so it's always like, you're ambitious. Well, yeah, I guess that's what yeah, it is. Ambitious. Ambitious. Yeah, <laughs> that's <what> I'm <laughs> Yes, I guess that's what we all need to learn is to yeah. not apologize. Right, for being exactly. Ambitious. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Love it. Um, so let's yeah. talk about the kitchen. Yes. Um, yes. What is it like being on the kitchen? Are you so? Do you work like nine to five every day? Like, what is? No. Okay. I have the greatest schedule. Okay. Yeah, we're in a group chat and we do send pictures to each other, and I love these people. Like. Jeffrey, Jeff, Sonny, Alex, these are, people are my family members now, and I really, they're, they're like my ride or die, like I love them, I am truly concerned for their happiness, their families, everything, like I love those people. So great. Yeah. Um, but I think the audience feels that too, though. They're so I yeah, they're very new you all. Oh, okay. yeah, thank you. you, all. you, thank you. So and, you and I think that's why that show sure. works. Yeah. But, you know, audience members are smart. And I feel like you're making food that's real, <laughs> that you would actually have in your kitchen. Yeah, virtual. Yeah, yeah. You're not using yeah. some, like, high-tech blender that's, right. you know. No, no. I want a few ingredients, and I want it to be good and fast. Yeah. And delicious. Yeah. Um, we've been really into dates in our house lately. And I love these Mitchell dates because um, they're slightly more expensive than other dates. But they're, like, kind of bigger, meatier, sweeter. They usually come with the pit. So take the pit out. And um, then you just stuff them with cheese. So that's it. That's <laughs> <what I'm doing. laughs> so you have some blue cheese. Yes. My other thing is, if you want this to be a sweet, like one of our favorites, um, is to put peanut butter in a piping bag or like in a Ziploc bag and just cut the end off. Either for kids, like after school, or for you. Um, but then, if I want to get fancy with the cheese, like either manchego or blue cheese, wrap these in prosciutto and then bake them. And then that's really good. But you can also just eat it just like this. <laughs> it's delicious. And, and dates apparently do all kinds of good things for you. And if you're having a baby, I've heard that at the end you eat your dates and it helps you go into labor. Like, it, well, not go into labor, it softens your cervix. I did that at the end. I was eating dates like crazy, and my OB was like, "I have never heard of that." <laughs> she was, she was like, "You've already gained almost sixty pounds." <laughs> I'm like, "Boy, <laughs> do you want to do it? Do it." I was like, "I'm doing it. I'm doing it." So, so, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what kind of cheese? You're gonna be like, "I went to see Katie Lee." <laughs> <laughs> Jess, you're so beautiful. Oh, that's so nice. Skin, hair, what are your speeches for that? Um, I, you know, I, I try not to do too much. So, like, if I'm not working, like, I try to just do, like, a lot of moisturizer. I, I love face oil. So, I'll, I'll be all greasy and shiny covered with oil. Um... <laughs> I usually say that I look like two different people. So <laughs> look at the person who I really am, and then there's one with stuff like this. Um, yeah, I used to say when I was single that the doorman probably thought that two girls lived in my apartment. Um, like, who's that girl about five o'clock that comes out all dressed up? Uh, go, go on a date. Um, now that my husband gets stuck with the one that's just like, <laughs> like the oil on the face. So, like, I color my own hair. Like, I, I don't do a, a whole lot because, like I said, the lazy thing. Um, that comes out of and it's like, would I rather go sit at the hair salon for three hours or would I rather be at home in my sweatpants watching TV? And usually at home in my sweatpants watching TV. Mm, got it. What is the win? Yeah. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Apparently, drinking a lot of water helps. Okay. 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 I never like hearing something like that. <laughs> exercise. I think exercise is always a good one. I feel like my body has changed so much since I had a baby. Um, I'm two sizes bigger than I was before I had a baby, but I weigh relatively the same. Maybe it's like a five pound difference. So it's funny how that happens, right? It's like everything just gets wider. Um, so I think that there's a lot of like self-talk that goes into that, you know, uh, like I'll, I'll have those moments where I'm like, God, why can't I wear my old clothes? And like, you know, you start beating up on yourself and then you have to remember like everything in life is a season. And I'll say to myself, like, Listen, 
job's not to be in a bathing suit or a swimsuit cover, so what does it matter? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, two sizes bigger than it used to be, and then I felt better. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do exercise a lot. I exercise uh, about five days a week, um, and my motivation for exercise is different than it used to be. It used to be because I wanted to be skinny and look hot in an outfit and go on a date. Um, <laughs> now my motivation is I want to feel strong and be able to carry my daughter around the city and 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 be there for her. Yeah. Yeah. Five days a week is good. And eat. And eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The motivation is still wanting to eat. Right, right, right. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm pregnant with my first child. How do you balance, especially just kind of what you're just talking about with your body? I mean, it's so weird having all these changes happening to my body. And I do want to raise a really strong, wonderful daughter. But I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm like five months away from giving birth and I'm already anxious about like how I'm going to teach her about food and about being strong. Mm-hmm. But I also know I'm going to be going through my own weird thing of like, okay, how do I get my body back to what yeah. I used to be before pregnancy? Yeah. So do you just have any tips about that? Just like, yeah, really conscious effort to not say in front of her, like, these pants don't fit. Yeah. I I feel heavy in this. Like I even though she's a baby and doesn't really understand, I wanted to get myself in the habit of not talking that way in front of her. And um I even tell my husband, like, don't say it is that she should eat and enjoy herself. But then I also talk to her about healthy eating too. She doesn't want to eat vegetables, but I let her see me eat them all the time. Um she eats fruits, but I talk to her and say like you should really eat those yellow peppers because you're going to run so strong, you know, so fast, and you're going to be the fastest kid in your class and so strong. So, like, I talked to her about food, about being strong and healthy. And I know everybody's like, oh, be body positive, this, that, and the other. But the realistic thing is, like, we're women, and we do have those conversations in our head, and, like, everybody can tell us not to, but we do. Yeah, and everybody's comparing themselves to what they were 20 yes, years ago. Or, you know, yes, yes. So it's, it's hard. And how many times have you taken a picture of yourself and go, oh, I look awful in that picture. And six months later, you go back and go, I look good. <laughs> and like, I love a picture of myself from like six years ago when I was so little. And I was like, why did I think I didn't look good then? I should have enjoyed it. So just know that like in 10 years, you're going to look back on the picture of today and be like, why didn't I enjoy myself? <laughs> I just started getting frozen salmon and cooking it from frozen without thawing it. And it works great. So if you have frozen salmon, you put it uh, in the oven, um, 450 for eight minutes. Take it out, season it, because if you season it way before you put it in, it's just raw carbs and that's all I have it. Put it in for eight minutes, season it, and then put it under the broiler for eight more minutes, and it's like perfect. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Is that only fish or that works with meat too? No, it works with meat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not making these like big fancy meals for us every evening because she won't eat them. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, she likes beef, so like I might make steak and baked potatoes and like I'll do the potato and wedges for her because she prefers that to the baked potato. So just like simple things, I find just simple cooking. She likes salmon, so we'll do salmon. So we're a lot of like a, a protein and two sides, basically, because then everybody's happy. Does your husband cook? <clears throat> he does. My husband's a good cook when I let him. <laughs> I have like a control issue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I love to eat and I do, I love to go out. Like I love our nights out. Um, and I love trying new restaurants, and um, I, I love like Italian food. Like there's some great Italian restaurants. We live in the West Village, so we do tend to go to the same places over and over again that we love, and, and places that are kid friendly. And what about um, when you're on the kitchen and you actually don't like the food that you're tasting? It very rarely happens. <laughs> like maybe only like three times I can think of. Yeah, and you have three like times. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> It'd be like if you went to your friend's house and didn't like what they did. Yeah, like, and it's not like something's been so awful. That, there was only one time that <laughs> something was so bad that everybody spit it out. But it was so funny because everyone collectively hated it. Yeah. Our producers come up with the different themes for the episodes. 
and then they put together it's six acts of the show. Mm -hmm. The first act is always going to be the big hero dish that um, mm -hmm. would be like the main event, and then everything is broken up into that. So they assign who's going to get which each act, which act it's going to be. We'll have a call, and they'll say, okay, so you're doing act one. It's a game day meal. Um, we'd really love to do something buffalo chicken. What would be some of your ideas? So I'll give like three different ideas, and then they'll come back to me and say, okay, we loved your idea for a buffalo chicken pizza, so let's go with that. So then I'll go develop the recipe, write the recipe, test it, send it back, and then it's like putting pieces of a puzzle together, right? When you said yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so then they fit it all together because, like, I'll have to give multiple ideas because for the other acts, and they have to see how it all fits together and makes a show. Like, if I was going to make a beef dish and Jeff wanted to make a beef dish in the same episode, then it would be too much beef. So, but I also gave an idea for a pork dish. So you know they'll put it together like that.